Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roe Dale Illustrated by Quentin Blake This is a story about a boy called Charlie Bucket. There were six people in his family, but none of them were Charlie's brothers or sisters. So who were they? First, Mr. and Mrs. Bucket, Charlie's mother and father. The other four people were Charlie's grandparents. They were so old, they stayed in bed all day and never got up. But they didn't have much room because they slept in the same bed. Grandpa Joe and Grandma Josephine at one end, Grandpa George and Grandma Georgina at the other. Charlie's family lived in a very small house. It wasn't easy for them. They were so poor. His mother tried hard to make nice meals, but it was always cabbage or bread or potatoes or more cabbage. Charlie dreamed of eating something else. Most of all, he dreamed of chocolate. In Charlie's town near his house, there was a chocolate factory. It was the biggest and the most famous chocolate factory in the world. All day long, he could smell that most delicious chocolate smell. If I had just one wish, Charlie thought, I would go inside that factory. One day, Grandpa Joe was reading the newspaper. Charlie, listen! Five golden tickets each in a bar of Wonka chocolate. Find one and visit the chocolate factory. The next day, Augustus found the first ticket. He was a greedy boy and nobody liked him. Here is Augustus with his mother. The next lucky child was Veruca. Her parents bought her thousands of Wonka bars. Veruca couldn't wait to open them. She just lay on the floor, kicked her legs and shouted, Where's my golden ticket? I want my golden ticket! When at last someone found one, she was happy. Three tickets left. Charlie hoped he would be lucky. Every year on his birthday, his family gave him a delicious bar of Wonka chocolate. Perhaps this year, it will have a golden ticket inside. How happy Charlie would be. Did he find a golden ticket? What do you think? Poor Charlie, but someone else was much happier. It was Violet, who found the third ticket. This girl loved chewing gum. She always had some in her mouth. If anyone found a piece of gum on their clothes, she just laughed. Grandma Georgina thought she was a horrible child. Soon after Charlie's birthday, Grandma Josephine was reading the newspaper. Listen, a horrible boy called Mike has found a golden ticket. Mike was crazy about television. He watched it all the time. If anyone tried to talk to him, he would shout, Go away! Can't you see I am watching television? A few days later, Charlie was walking home from school. It was a very cold day. Suddenly, he saw something in the snow. It was some money. To Charlie, this meant only one thing. Food. I must give it to my mom, he thought. But first, perhaps I'll... 
The kind of food Charlie was thinking about was chocolate. In no time at all, he was inside a shop. After buying a bar of Wonka chocolate, he quickly pulled off the paper. What a delicious smell! Then Charlie saw something yellow under the chocolate. He couldn't believe his eyes. A few minutes later, Charlie arrived back home. I have found it! I have found it! He shouted. Found what? Asked his grandparents. A golden ticket. Answered Charlie. Hooray! Shouted Grandpa Joe. Hooray! Then, forgetting where he was, he jumped high in the air. His soup went all over Grandma Josephine. At last, the day arrived. It was a lovely sunny morning. Hundreds of people were standing outside the famous factory. They were waiting to see the children who were going inside for the day. Stand back! Stand back! Said a policeman as a line of people walked past. Veruca came first, wearing an expensive skirt and jacket. Next came Mike, dressed like someone in a TV film. Then came Augustus and Violet. All these children had their parents with them, but not Charlie, who was last in the line. He had Grandpa Joe. Ten o'clock, time to begin. But where was Mr. Willy Wonka? Then someone shouted, "That's him!" And so it was. All eyes turned towards the funny little man with his pointed beard. My dear children, he said, "How do you do?" And these are your parents. How nice! Come in. What an amazing place! Inside the factory, there were beautiful green fields. Trees, flowers, and a brown river. Look near the waterfall," said Veruca. "Lots of little dolls. Are they people? Why, yes, they are," said Mr. Wonka. "They are Oompa Loompas, famous for working, dancing, and singing." While the Oompa Loompa sang, Augustus walked down the river. It must be full of chocolate, he thought. He lay on his stomach to taste it. Delicious! Be careful! You'll fall in! Shouted Mr. Wonka. Splash! Too late. Augustus was in the river. Then suddenly he was gone. Augustus, where is Augustus? I'll never see him again! Cried his mother. Yes, you will, answered Mr. Wonka, but not now. What a bad boy! It was time to sail down the chocolate river. Charlie looked around. Everything in this amazing world was made of sugar. The pink boat was sugar. The Oompa Loompas rowed the boat down a long tunnel. They stopped opposite a door in the wall. This is the most important room in the factory," said Mr. Wonka. "Come inside." What a place! Magic sweets of every kind, like green gobstoppers that never got any smaller in your mouth. 
In the middle of the room was a great big metal machine. It moved up and down, making a very loud noise. <coughs> Clonk, clatter, bang. Suddenly out came something small and flat. It's chewing gum, Violet shouted. That's right, said Mr. Wonka. The most amazing gum in the world. It's magic gum, you see, said Mr. Wonka. This piece tastes of soup, meat, and blueberry pie. Violet put the gum in her mouth. Hmm, delicious. Help! cried her mother. She's turning purple. And Round," said Mr. Wonka, "like a blueberry. Oompa Loompas, take her away. Get the juice out." The next stop was the nut room, where hundreds of little animals were opening nuts. "I want a little animal!" shouted Veruca, trying hard to catch one. But the animals caught her and pushed her down with the rubbish. Then down went Veruca's mother. And what happened to her father? There were only five visitors left now. They were all feeling tired. I want to watch television," said Mike. "Fine." Said Mr. Wonka, "We'll take the lift." The machine was as fast as a rocket. It could go up and down and round corners. It was crazy. The visitors stepped out of the lift into a brilliant white room. Then they put on dark glasses. This is where we test our television chocolate," said Mr. Wonka. What do you mean? Asked Mike. Well, with a TV camera, we send it to another place. It goes by television. It arrives much smaller. Watch this. Six Oompa Loompas put a big piece of chocolate under the camera. Suddenly. It was in the TV. Mike went under the camera. He's so small! cried Mike's mom. It's all right, said Mr. Wonka. The Oompa Loompas will make him big again. Then, Mr. Wonka turned to Charlie and said, "My dear boy, you are the only boy left." Well done, you have won. Step into the lift. Here we go. Charlie was very surprised. What have I won? He thought. Where are we going? The lift flew up into the sky. The people below looked very small. Look, said Mr. Wonka. The other children. Augustus at the front, Mike at the back. I'm going to give them sweets to take home. But for you, Charlie, something else. The lift was right above Charlie's house. Charlie, said Mr. Wonka, you have won my factory. It's yours. Charlie couldn't think. The lift was falling. Crash! Help! cried Grandma Josephine. The end of the world. But it was just the beginning. We're going to live in Charlie's chocolate factory, said Grandpa Joe. We'll never be hungry again.
the end